This video continues our exploration of play. In addition to giving back, you know, just last time we gave back a simple string, now I want to actually generate a web page, and we're going to use twirl templates for doing this. So we had added a route that goes to a task list, and we had added a controller that has a method in it called task list. But right now it just says this works. Okay, now this was generated algorithmically, so we could have had arbitrary Scala code inside of here producing whatever string we wanted, but I actually want to do this instead using the twirl templates. So if you go back and look at application, you'll see that this OK gave a view in HTML index, okay, which points to this index inside of views. I want to make a different view. I am going to make a view, and I'm going to call it task list one. Once again, we're going to have multiple versions of our task list inside of here. And you can see this creates a file for me that starts with an at, and then it has parentheses, looks like an argument list. And right now it starts with param any. Well, my task list isn't just an any. It's going to be a sequence of strings. So I'll call this tasks, and it will be a sequence of string. And it turns out these twirl templates actually get compiled to Scala code, and the at symbol is the one special symbol inside of twirl templates that says this is not just normal text, because I can type anything I want in here, and it would be sent back. Okay, It would basically be part of the generated text. If you put an at, it says that you're calling code. Now, I want to use the template, this main template, that's going to be uniform across our entire project, and so I will call main. The title of the page is going to be task list. And inside of here, let's just go ahead real quick. And say that we have a task list, give it a little heading. Now I want this instead of giving back a string to call this view. So I'm going to say views.html. And the name of my template. Now this one won't actually be found, and the autocomplete will not uh, put it there for me. I'm going to start off with a list of nil. Because these twirl templates are kind of compiled separately, Eclipse does not see them by default. Uh, you can either decide that you live with this, for at least for a while, or there is a way of getting rid of it. If I refresh this page, though, instead of saying this works, it should give us back our page that has a heading of task list, uh, but nothing else in it, because that's all that we've produced. If you don't like having that spurious error, turns out that if you regenerate the Eclipse project and refresh it, it'll go away. We'll also talk about something called reverse routing and reverse routing because it's also from the compiled routes file has a similar issue. Personally, I live to deal with it and then just every so often I make sure to regenerate the, the Eclipse project and things go back. But a lot of times in these videos for the views, I won't bother fixing the error that's there. I should actually restart our server now. Okay. So we started our twirl template. Uh, what I want this to actually have inside of it isn't just that heading. I want it to have an unordered list that has some list elements in it. Now, of course, I could hard code these, right? Uh, so list item one is make videos. List item two, publish videos. List item three, sleep. Okay, <clears throat> sleeping is a very good practice that my students don't do nearly enough, but you, you perform much better if you're getting adequate sleep. Let's just verify that that actually comes up in our page. We hit this, it goes through and it does a recompile, and if I had syntax errors, I'd find out about it. Yay, there we go, okay. But I don't want that list to be these hard-coded strings. I want that list to be this sequence of strings. Now right now we're not passing anything interesting in, but how about we 
make something called tasks. I'm going to hard code it for now. Um, task one, task two, I need more quotes, task three. And instead of passing in nil, let's pass in tasks. So now my challenge is I need to get this sequence of tasks to be in here. Of course, I don't know how many of them there are. So I can't just say li of something like task sub one. Okay, that won't work. Um, if we were going through this in normal Scala code, we'd write a for loop. And it turns out that twirl templates basically use Scala syntax. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make a for loop. But to say that it's code, remember, we have to put that at sign. So I say at for task in tasks, just like a normal Scala for loop. One thing about the twirl for loops is even if I don't use a yield, it gives back a value. So now I can put I can put a list element in here okay, and say task. And that's almost working. Okay, well, we got three of them. Well, three is good because this list had three elements in it. Let's add two more and make sure that the page comes back with five elements. Hey, there's five elements. They're just not the right ones. Okay. The reason for that is because, once again, if you put just plain text in here, that's what gets reproduced. If it needs to be code, you put an at. So putting at task on this says, I want this to be this task variable. And if we go and we refresh now, now we get these values. Okay? And this is really significant to us because once again, these values came from inside of our program. Now, yes, I have them hard coded here, but they could have come from any arbitrary source. They could have been calculated or pulled from a database or whatever, and they will be brought into our view and dynamically make the web page that has that content that we want. So we're going to stop this video here. We'll come back next time and we'll start talking about how we get information to the pages, uh, basically more ways of adding information inside of the routes. Uh, we'll also start looking at forms and how the user gets information to us, telling us something about what it is that they want to request.